Greetings hobbyists, this is Artans of Vool. And Blender 4.1 is just on the horizon, out on March 16th, if reports are to be believed, and it's got a couple of node options that I think are really exciting that I wanted to talk to you about. So if you watch the channel, you know I occasionally like to dabble with geometry nodes. It is not something I would ever claim that I'm an expert at, but I find them really useful, and there is one thing or limiting feature about them, especially with the new option to set up tools and things like that, that I find really annoying, and that is that sometimes you want to have multiple options, and to be able to accommodate those multiple options, you have to use, well, basically a very long series of switches that are annoying. But happily, we have now got a big improvement in our switch menu. So if I just go into Shift A and type in switch, we now have a normal switch, but we also have an index switch and a menu switch. So what are these? Well, let's start with the index switch. So what's really exciting about this, I'll just plug in the output, is that this gives you a load of options that you can pick. And effectively, this will, instead of having to make tons and tons of switches to make this work, all work in one switch. So for example, if I bring in a cube primitive, and I'll just plug that into there, you can see we've now got our cube. Let's bring in a cylinder. We'll plug that into one. And then we could also bring in as many more as we want. So let's bring in a cone. So let's put that there and plug that into there. And you'll notice automatically it creates two. Now, what this means is we can change this index between zero, one, two, and it will change between these objects. Now, this could be objects that we've created ourselves, so it doesn't have to be these primitives. We could be using the object info node if we've got something we want to bring in here. So you can pick between them. And if we bring in our group input, and I drag that index into the group input, you'll see that if I come over to the modifier menu, this now gives me my index option. And without even having to look at my geometry nodes, I can switch between these choices. And you can set this up to be other things. This could be a whole series of functions that you set up to work off of 0, 1, 2, or 3. Now, I really like this and think it's really impressive. But where this gets better for me is if we get rid of that index switch and Shift A and bring in a menu switch, this gets absolutely awesome. So what I'm gonna do is drag in my cube to A, drag in my cylinder to B, and if I come over here to Node, we can also add in a new one as well. So we have to hit this plus button by coming to the node menu. You will probably automatically have this on group. So click on your node, change it to node, and we can add or delete them here. It doesn't automatically do it, which I wish it did, that'd be quite nice. So we're gonna drag that there. But where this gets brilliant is that if I click on this node again, if I double click here, I can name it. So I can call this cube. I can name this one cylinder, and I can name this one cone. So now if I come to my group input, let's just get rid of that index, we don't want that anymore, I can drag that across, and now we've got my menu, and I can select, do I want this to be a cube, or a cylinder, or a cone? And obviously as normal with geometry nodes, I could rename this, so I could say, I don't know, shape. And we've got that now in my menu system, so I can change between this. So why am I so hyped about this? Well, there's a couple of reasons, but this is the first one. So this is a geometry node setup that I created a while ago. There's a link in the description if you want to have a look at it. And effectively, it allows you to make a setup of randomized tiles. But what's really cool about this is you can set the gap between each of the tiles to be bigger or smaller, and then all of these are obviously randomized, and then you can change the length in terms of the number of tiles, so you can make it longer or shorter, and then you can change the width if you want to have it more or less. You can also change things like the tile angle and stuff like that, so you can do pretty much anything that you want to do with this setup. But there is one problem with it, or one annoyance, and that is that for 3D printing, I'm gonna want this Boolean together, and I want this to be part of the geometry node setup. Now, this is the geometry node setup in its entirety. As I said, there's a video that goes through this creation perfectly, and that's in the description. But because if we automatically had this booleaning, changing all of these values would be really slow, what I've done at the end is put a switch that allows you to change it between just having the instances 
and just doing a boolean. I just realized we probably want a shade smooth on there as well, because otherwise it's gonna turn a little bit ugly. But this is a bit of a painful way of doing it. I mean, it works, but you can only set this by having a value of either one or zero, with one being the fact that it's going to boolean it. Anything else but I normally use zero would not boolean it. So we've got that there, and it's not really very descriptive. Now, what's really cool is that with this switch option, so if I just type in switch and we choose a menu switch, I can now click on this, go to the node and set this up really nicely. So I'm gonna have A being no Boolean, B being Boolean, and then we've got that ready to go. So what I can do now is get rid of both of those, get rid of this switch and all of this nonsense over there, and then I can just bring that the Boolean, the no Boolean, put that to the output, and then I can just set this up with our group input. So let's just select this, go to our group, get rid of the Boolean, we don't want that anymore, and I'm just gonna bring that in here. We'll rename this from menu to Boolean, question mark again, and then now we've got our tile set up here. But instead of having this, you've got to guess if it's a zero or a one, we have a really nice clear no Boolean and a boolean drop down menu and that will allow us to then do what we want to do and you'll notice that because this is a geometry node boolean even though it's booleaning with itself it booleans perfectly i really like the geometry node boolean it's very very cool so for me this setup with us being able to really clearly label our options is just so good now there is one other thing that i would say is really promising with this in terms of providing a really clear option but I'm gonna cover that in a future video because it's gonna take a while to set this up and I think it's gonna be a geometry node setup that people might be interested in because it will solve an issue that I have with Blender and one of its functions that I've been having for a while. So hopefully you'll join me for that and if you aren't subscribed to the channel, do subscribe and hit that bell icon so that you get a notification about that. But alternatively, if you're more impatient, that is already gonna be available on the Patreon which has a link in the description where for a few dollars a month, you get access to all these videos a week ahead of time without adverts and some really cool other perks as well. Have a great day, guys.